Hello and welcome to the 100 Acre Wool Knitting Podcast. My name is Bella and I am a knitter and knitwear designer and fiber artist based in Northern California in the US. And this is a podcast where we talk about knitting and spinning and fiber and all the good things like that, sewing sometimes as well. Um, I just share with you what I'm working on and new things that may have come into my life and also my uh, knitwear design process with you as well. So today's episode, I have a lot of knitting progress to share with you. It's finally getting cold here in Northern California. I'm not super north, I'm in the Bay Area, but it's finally getting cold. <laughs> so I have been definitely getting some progress done on some sweaters that I have in the works and things that are gonna prepare us for the colder weather. <laughs> so that's a lot of what today is about. And then also some new things that have come into my life. And if you're not new around here, um, you may have heard that I have a llama fleece. It's not really a fleece. I have a bunch of llama fiber that I have now started preparing and actually spinning. So we'll talk about that today as well. So if that sounds like your cup of tea or cup of coffee, then stick around. Um, yes, I am drinking some coffee today. I am very, very cold right now, so I am bundled up and just cozy and ready to talk to you about all the knitting and fiber and good things like that. So um, in order to get started, let me put this down. Um, we will first talk about what I am wearing. Um, a little announcement first up. So this shawl that I have on, this is my Caroline shawl. Um, this is a pattern that I released last year and it is just so cozy. Wait, did I release it last year? Or no, I think it was the beginning of this year. I think it was in January this year. Anyway, <laughs> it's a very cozy, really big shawl. Um, knit it out of Onorok Air Nutiden yarn. I love this so much. <laughs> and then underneath, I am also wearing my lace cap tee, which this is now published and available on Ravelry. I am so excited. It's a little bit late. <laughs> um, some things happened on the way to getting this thing published, but um, I know it's not a sweater. It may not be the most appropriate thing for this time of year, but as you can see, I just had a shawl over it and you could also wear a cardigan or a sweater with it. I think t-shirts can be all year round wear. I personally don't like separate my t-shirts for winter wear. I just throw things on top of it. <laughs> so yeah, this is now available on Ravelry, like I said, and I will also be putting it on my Etsy store if it's not there already. Um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with how this pattern came out and all of my testers had great things to say about it. They really enjoyed it and loved how it turned out for them. Um, I did have a couple of testers use some more drapier yarn than what I used for this sample as well, and I think it turned out even more beautifully, so some really gorgeous projects. Um, yeah, so I will just stand up to show you a little more of what mine looks like. So on me, this comes about a little bit, it comes just about to my hip bone length, um, but you could definitely make it longer. I also include instructions in the pattern to lengthen it, which also quite a few testers did. And then just a really simple construction for the top portion. It's knit bottom up in the round. Um, so all of this portion is knit in the round. Goes really, really quickly. <laughs> and some fun textures in there as well. I will show up close for you. So some really easy, fun textures and then some lace and a cute little v-neck and then everything continues as well on the back. So yes, for my sample, for the sample here, I used Newton yarn held double so it creates a worsted weight or DK weight worsted weight yarn. Sometimes it depends on the colorways you use. Um, but yes, I used an unspun yarn for this particular sample. So actually my core area is very, very warm. <laughs> so if you tend to be like warmer on your arms or like you don't need a sleeve necessarily, which I actually feel that way sometimes, sometimes a sweater is too warm, this would actually be a perfect in-between. <laughs> so it keeps you nice and toasty and warm. Oh, and on my bottoms, I'm actually wearing a full me made wardrobe or a full me made outfit today. I just realized <laughs> um, my skirt 
is also my estuary skirt that I sewed a little while ago. So, full me made outfit today. But yes, so the lace cap tee pattern is now available and it is also available in nine different sizes. Um, and I will have all of the information and, and details like that. I will have the pattern linked down below so that you can check it out if you're interested. So yeah. Um, okay, so now we will get into works in progress. I don't have any finished objects this week. I've been working on some longtime whips and some newer whips, um, just things that I've wanted to put a good dent in. So <laughs> nothing finished, just been working on multiple things. <laughs> and actually also some new cast-ons as well. So let's see, I guess first we will talk about my Moreau sweater which this is what it's looking like right now. This is my second sample of my Moreau sweater, which this is another design that I am working on currently. And my first sample I knit with Spin Cycle yarns and a Miss Babs yarn. Um, and those were both Superwash, um, a fingering and a sport weight yarn. And they turned out very differently from how this one is going. This one I'm using one strand of Nutiden on spun yarn in three different colorways because the pattern calls for three different colorways for the color work portion of this yoke top um and yeah it's turning out a lot differently just in the feeling and and it feels you know the feeling if you felt unspun yarn before as opposed to a super wash yarn they have a very different feeling um when you have knit them up into a garment and i think i will also be wearing them in different situations i think this will be a much warmer sweater and then my first sample would be more of kind of i can wear that anytime it's not as i don't know how to describe it it's not as like super super cozy but anyway i will show you the details of this one up close so also the color work how it's looking is also coming out very different on this sample as well um, since I'm using I intentionally wanted to use more high contrast colors for this sample um, so that we could just see what the motif looks like more clearly and I'm really having fun I'm really having fun with it I'm loving how it's coming out and how much attention it draws I don't know I just think it's really fun so yeah the color work goes all the way around the yoke and there's also some fun little short row shaping at the top here. So um, right in here, there's some short row shaping just to give a deeper swoop to the color work. I thought that would be a really elegant kind of a look. So there's a bit more of, of shaping up there. Um, and yeah, this is a pretty standard sort of stranded color work. Most of the rows, um, I would say 90% of the rows, are only two colors at a time, so regular stranded color work. And nothing has too long of floats in between them. I think the longest uh, floats would be like five stitches, maybe a six stitch somewhere in there, but pretty short floats throughout the entire thing. Um, though there are a couple of rows that have three colors, but there's not very many at all, and I don't know, the way that I designed it, um, it, it wasn't difficult to knit, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, it was it was kind of intuitive, and, and the the yarns wanted to behave with each other, so yeah, it's been it's been really enjoyable over, overall, and I've been having a lot of fun with it. So yeah, this is turning out very cozy and lovely. Oh, and for this sample, I also sized up, because I wanted this one the sample again to be extra cozy and warm. Sorry if you're hearing my needles banging around. <laughs> but yes, I am very excited to have this one finished so I can start wearing it. And I know it will be nice and cozy warm for going on walks and things. And I will show the show you the inside as well. I always love looking at the inside of the color work. I think sometimes it can be its own work of art, just the inside of the color work, right? I've actually been seeing that a lot <laughs> in like, um, you know, normal clothing stores. It seems to be like a trend right now that the outside or the floats side is actually the right side of the sweater. And I don't know, they can create, they can create some pretty interesting shapes and things that way. So that's always fun to see. <laughs> um, so this 
pattern uses US size 4 or 3.5 millimeter needles. That's what I'm using, but of course you would just use whatever you need to get gauge. And I think with this sample, I'm actually getting a bit of a looser gauge, um, or it's just the fluffiness of the yarn is making it a little bit bigger, but I will of course note to all of that in the pattern some changes that you might experience if you use different yarns than what the pattern calls for. But anywho, I'm having a lot of fun with this one. And yeah, like I said, I'm so excited to start wearing it. It's gonna be so cozy and pretty and wonderful for the holidays with all of this beautiful color work. So let's get into the next work in progress. Ooh, I have fluff in my mouth. <laughs> okay, so another sweater that I am currently working on. So this I kind of recently cast on. I shared with it I shared it with you all last time and I've made some progress now and of course you can't really see it because it's super dark yarn. Um, but this is another sweater design that I'm currently working on. It is a lot of fun textures all throughout and kind of a lacy fabric. So I will show it up close to you there so hopefully you can see all the details. It's just a really easy repetitive motif that you just get in the groove with and it's a lot of fun. So this sweater is going to be very drapey, oversized, comfortable, just throw it over anything. I'm kind of planning this to be like a wear around the house, just chuck on anytime sort of a piece. I really want something cozy, but still kind of breathable and has movement. So that's kind of the idea behind this one. So at this point I have split the sleeves. So I have some stitches on hold now and I am working on the body. And this will also be a split hem. Is that what it's called? Split sides? You probably know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I do want it to be able to like tuck into jeans or tuck into a skirt or something like that because I don't know. I don't want it to be, I want it to be long but I also want it to be able to be tucked if you want it to look shorter or just have some more shaping at the bottom. Um, so that's the idea right now and it's got a really cozy fluffy neckline, um, a folded over one by one rib neckline. So this is really fun and easy to execute and I just think it looks so cute and it's very very cozy to have around your neck. And then I really enjoy this detail on the back of the shoulder. Hopefully you can see there. It almost looks like a leaf. I think that looks so cool. So kind of the shoulder shaping and increases and such. I just thought that was a really pretty little detail that happened. It was sort of unplanned but I'm really happy it turned out that way. So yeah, just working away on this one, chugging away on this one. And I will be splitting um, the sides pretty soon. So yeah, I'm excited to see how this one comes out and it's just been a really fun and easy project to just have on the go and work on anytime. Um, so let me, did I talk about the yarn? The yarn that I'm using is Newted End Yarn. I'm using one strand of unspun, um, unspun Newted End Yarn held with a strand of mohair, silk mohair. Um, the silk mohair is from Shibui Knits and this is the plate of Newted End I'm working with. It is a kind of a deep warm gray. Can it be warm and gray at the same time? Yes, because this is. <laughs> so um, yeah, but together, oh, and the, and the Shibui Knits, um, I think I'll actually need to join in a new ball so I don't have it with me here, but it's just a really deep navy blue and I'm really enjoying how it's, how it's creating the fabric. It really doesn't look marled so much, it just deepens the whole look, I think, with the, with the deep blue. So. Yeah, just having a lot of fun with these textures and since the yarns are so fluffy it's kind of just filling it out in a lovely way um, I'm just I'm just excited to have it finished 
I think this will be what I finish first and then I'll be finishing the Moreau sweater. I really want this to be able to chuck on in the house and just wear anytime. Okay, I think it's coffee break time. I would love to hear what you are working on right now. Have you started on holiday gift presents? Are you doing that? Um, yeah, I would love to know what you're knitting or spinning or sewing or whatever craft you're into. I know some of you are crocheters as well, which I think is totally awesome. I myself have been getting into crochet and I have a few projects <laughs> kind of lined up that I want to start on for crochet as well. I'm just getting over the years of, you know, getting obsessed with knitting and the fiber arts, I feel I have just been going deeper and deeper <laughs> into this whole realm <laughs> of making with yarn and fabric and things. So yes, I would love to know what you are working on right now. Mm. Okay. Next, another work in progress, kind of a long-term, long-term work in progress. I had this project sort of put away for a while because it was not really seasonally appropriate to be knitting on in the summertime. <laughs> so I put it on hold and now that it is finally getting cold again, I want the recipient of this project to be able to wear the sweater. So I am working on it again and it is flying off the needles. I think I'm going to have it done really quickly. So this sweater is really big. <laughs> it's there we go. I think I have all of it in the frame, maybe. There we go. So this is a sweater that I am um, improvising. I'm not working off of a pattern or anything like that, but this is a sweater that I'm knitting for a friend and he really, really wanted. I asked him, you know, what do you want me to knit you? I would love to knit you something. I pretty much say that to all my friends in my life, all my close friends in my life. Um, yeah, I would love to knit you something, what would you like? And he really wanted the sweater um, that Maria de Armas wears in Knives Out. Um, the first Knives Out, is there only one Knives Out? I think so, anyway. <laughs> um, she wears this really beautiful dark blue marled sweater. I think it's gorgeous. So he really wanted a sweater like that for himself. So just kind of looking at pictures, I kind of just guesstimated um, what the stitch is and maybe the yarn weight used and everything like that. Um, so yeah, and then just cast on, cast on a sweater. So I am working this bottom up in the round and the entire thing is one by one ribbing. It looked to me in the photos like it was one by one rib. If not, then maybe a fisherman's rib, but I actually did try fisherman's rib for this and it wasn't turning out. I didn't really like it. So <laughs> ripped that part out. Um, so yeah, I've just been knitting in one by one rib for this whole thing. And right now it is definitely cinching together. Um, it still fits him really well, even cinched up like this because, you know, ribbing likes, ribbing likes to hold its shape together. Um, but I am going to try to block it wider when I do block the sweater when it's all finished. I am going to try to widen it out just to open up the ribbing a little bit because that's what it looked like it was in the photos um, from the movie. So yeah, but ever, um, but since I last showed this project to you all, I have finished the entire body. So um, I split, split for the sleeves. I have some stitches on hold and then I will be picking up stitches around the armhole to knit down. And then I also need to do the neckband, but I just got to this point and then stopped so that he could try it on. And he has tried it on now, so we're ready to go. We're ready to continue. And I'm really excited. I can't wait for this to be done. And now at this point, it's pretty much really easy because I just need to do the neck hole or the neckband. Um, and then for each of the sleeves, he doesn't need any decreases. Decreases. He just wants it to be straight sleeves. So gonna go pretty quickly I think <laughs> um, but yeah so I'll just talk through a little bit of the construction that I did for the top portion of this um, so again like I said I've been working bottom up so then at the underarm point when I wanted to split for the underarm I just put some stitches on hold on either side and then kept working flat all the way up 
And then when I knew that I wanted to start the bottom of the front neck band and also the back of the neck band, I made the neck band, you can see, like an inch, inch and a half taller because you always want the back to be a little bit taller so that it'll reach over the back of your neck. Um, so once I got to that point, um, horizontally, then I cast off a few stitches and then I would work on like either side. So just on the right side or just on the left side, going back and forth and then also decreasing either one or two stitches on the edge here all the way up. And then I just did a simple three needle bind off at the very top here and also making sure that the ribbing lined up between the front and the back. Hopefully you can see that. So I just wanted to make sure that the ribbing was gonna look continuous so that knit stitches were on top of knit stitches and pearls were on top of pearls. Um, and that's pretty much all I did. So it was the same sort of a technique for the front and the back. It's just the back I started casting off stitches and decreasing stitches later since I wanted the back to be a little bit higher. Um, and then I also just, I generally knit a few more rows in the back just so that it was generally a bit longer in the back. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was kind of my method there. And for the yarn, I have been using two strands of Nutiden held with two lace weights. So that's a really thick yarn. <laughs> this is going to be the coziest, <laughs> most like windbreaker sort of coat of a sweater, <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, let's see, that's a worsted weight plus a almost a DK weight all in one. I don't even know what that weight would be, but maybe a bulky. But anyway, um, it's going to be very, very warm for him. So <laughs> I'm excited about that. Hopefully he'll still be able to wear it in the California weather. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, I needed to do that combination um, because if I held only, I, I noticed that when I held only one strand of the blue of the Newton yarn of the unspun, um, if I held only one strand of the blue with the one lace and one with the, each of the laces, lace weights, um, it wasn't giving enough of the blue color overall. So that's why I doubled it up. So I hope, I hope, I think that the fabric is coming out like he wanted it. Um, so yeah, that one's coming along well and pretty quickly. I'm excited to have that finished. I'm actually getting warm now, <laughs> so I'm gonna take off my shawl here. But yeah, okay, let's see what's next. Another whip, actually a new cast on. So I was talking with Brittany from Crux Fibers a few days ago, and um, she was giving, she was so nice, she was giving me some pointers on my new fleeces. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I talked about, um, I think it was the last video, if not the one before that. Um, I have gotten some wool fleeces that I am so excited to be starting to prep and spin with, but she was just so kind to give me some pointers on, on that. So that was really helpful and thank you so much, Brittany. I have been researching and I'm really excited to get started on those. But yeah, so um, anyway, what am I getting? <laughs> get to the point. So <laughs> She was, um, we were talking together and then I have some yarn of her, uh, some yarn of hers that I, I didn't know what to knit with it. And I, it's just such spe special yarn. I was trying to kind of wait and try to figure out like the best, um, pattern that I could use them for because I didn't have very much and I really wanted to use it for something good that I would be really excited about. So she had the great idea. She suggested the Fleur Shawl by, is it Church Mouse Yarn Shop? I'm forgetting who it's actually from, but I will have it linked down below, of course, and I might put it here. <laughs> but I know it's called the Fleur Shawl. And when she said that and I looked it up, I realized I actually saw this shawl before and I thought it was gorgeous. And I've always, it's been on my to make list for quite a while. Um, it's really simple. It's a free pattern. So I figured, why not? Let's just cast it on. 
I always love having a really simple project that I can just work on at any time that doesn't require any brain energy. So I was like, yes, let's do it. So I cast on the Fleur Shawl and of course I'm in the middle of a row because I'm a bad knitter. <laughs> um, but yes, I've cast on the Fleur Shawl and I am already at this point, I have done one row of the little baubles and they're just so pretty, so sweet. So I'm really excited about this shawl. But I am already a little bit nervous. Um, I think that I might run out of yarn. So I only have two skeins of Brittany's, um, Brittany's, uh, th this particular uh, base that I have of hers. So, I only have two skeins of this. This is the first, and then I have one more. And I think I am like halfway done with this one, if not a little bit more. And this looks already to be a pretty good size, but there's still a lot more to go. So yeah, I'm just kind of nervous that I might not have enough. But the good thing about this pattern is that I think you could pretty much make it as big or as small as you want because it is worked like top down. I'm sorry I can't fully show you the full thing. Hopefully that helps because <laughs> um, I'm in the middle of a row. But anyway, yes, it's worked flat. So I think it's something I could just finish whenever I want to. Um, I would like it to look just like the original, but it'll be okay. I'll still love it nonetheless. And we'll see. I may, I don't, it may be fine. I may have enough yarn. Um, I think according to the pattern, I don't. Like I think if I'm comparing the yardage, then I don't have enough but we will see. It's okay. <laughs> so this lovely yarn, I'm having so much fun knitting with it. It's a really beautiful, subtly marled yarn. And I believe this is undyed. So these are the natural colors of the sheep in this yarn. Just really beautiful. And I think minimally, minimally processed. So this is Crux Fibers Low Mileage Wool. And this one is Gotland and BFL, spun at Rosewood River Fiber Mill. It is a DK weight and it is marled. And the fiber supplied for this yarn, I know is local to Brittany um, in Canada. So I just thought this was such beautiful yarn. Thank you so much again, Brittany, for sending me this. I'm having a lot of fun knitting with it. And I know this shawl is gonna be so cozy and comfy. And it's just gonna go with everything because it's a neutral gray, so. That'll be a lot of fun to wear. Um, so yes, I'm using one strand of the Crux Fibers Low Mileage Wool, and then I'm holding that with a um, silk mohair that I had in my stash. This is by Biche et Bouche. It's just their, I forget what they call it, but it's the Biche et Bouche um, silk mohair. And yeah, it's just coming out so beautifully. And I love the little pebbly bits they look like pebbles in this yarn because of the the little bit of marling going on. So, yeah, having a lot of fun on that sweet little project. And I think we have another whip. Yes, I cast on something else new. Um, I have cast on a new pair of socks for my partner. Like I said, it's getting colder around here and my partner still does not have a pair of unspun yarn socks, which have now become my favorite socks. <laughs> so, oh, another fuzz. So I was telling him, you're getting a pair of unspun socks <laughs> and told him to pick out his colors. So that's what we're working on now. Um, this is another easy, fun project to have on my needles. It goes really quickly and it's just, it's just a lot of fun. So he picked out these two colors. Oops, something stuck. Okay. He picked out these two colors. This one is Ongi. I think that's how you say it. And then this one is Infinitive. Some really dark jewel tones, really beautiful yarns. And I've never worked with these together. I thought it was a really interesting color combo. And in fact, yes, Look at this combo. I hope the camera is going to pick up all the subtleties. I think it just looks so cool. It doesn't really look marled to me. Like 
in the regular sense of the word marled because they are so close together like the colors are so close in their depth and shade um, I think it's just really beautiful very electric and and moody or something like that I don't know I think it's really cool how it's turning out so um, yeah this is a very new cast on I think I just cast it on yesterday or the day before um, so this pattern or rather recipe that I'm using these are the Kura socks um, by Evil Knits and I've talked about that <laughs> that recipe a ton of times on here so I will link it down below for you if you haven't checked it out make sure to check it out it is a great recipe for a basic sock or whatever kind of sock you want to knit um, that you can tailor make to tailor make to uh, your measurements and the yarn that you have and you can just make it exactly the way that you want to to fit your foot or someone you are knitting it for um, yeah it's a really great recipe would highly recommend it so um, it's worked bottom up so I cast on here at the toe tip and then you do a certain amount of increases to get to the widest part of the foot and then now I'm at the point where I am just on my nine inch circulars and just working around and round and round. I love this part. It is so much fun. I love my nine inch circulars for socks and sleeves and everything small. It's my new favorite way to knit them. And now sleeves are not a slog for me <laughs> because I don't know, I, I realized I didn't like magic loop after a while for that. I would get some tension issues with it, but Anyway, so yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with it. And of course you can see I don't want to put it down. <laughs> so um, yeah, having a lot of fun with this project. And these will probably be finished pretty, pretty quickly. Um, the Kura socks always go really quickly for me. Okay, I think now we will get into spinning. So what's first? Oh my goodness. I've been working on a lot of spinning, spinning yarn for my friend's shifty sweater that I'm going to be knitting for her soon. I've been hand spinning uh, four different colorways, um, four different color, no, not four, six different colorways of, of yarn for her for that shifty sweater. <laughs> and all of them are actually way more than you need for the shifty sweater because I'm, I'm just, I'm spinning the entire braid. So they're all somewhere between 3.4 to 4 ounces of yarn, um, or fiber rather. Anyway, it's a lot. So I'm almost done. I am really, we're getting close guys. I'm so excited to actually start knitting this project. So I have finished another colorway. These are done and soaked and dried and they came out so lovely and wonderful. I'm having a lot of fun with this progress, with this project. And it's also kind of funny because my yarns keep getting, like, in my opinion, like, I'm improving with every skein, that I, at least a little bit, um, with every skein that I do. So it's been a lot of fun, this project. But yeah, so this is another one finished. So this is a really just shiny gray and with some little pink and orange throughout, just a really... I don't know, delicate and sweet little colorway. Um, this fiber was from Neighborhood Fiber Co, which I've been using a lot for this project. And these two skeins, um, I think the, the whole braid was probably four ounces. Yeah, I think these are more than 100 grams together. So it got me two skeins because I don't like to overload my bobbin and it definitely wouldn't have fit all of this on one of my four ounce bobbins. Um, so yeah, just really pretty little colorways. I really love how it came out and they turned out so soft. I don't know. I guess I'm just improving with my spinning, I guess. Like they feel like actual yarn. <laughs> like I've been noticing that some of my yarn can feel a little ropey sometimes. I think I overspin sometimes. Um, no, but these are feeling really nice. I was just feeling them and just noticing how soft they are and how squishy they are. So yeah, I'm really excited about them. And I spun these the same way that I've been spinning all of them for this project. So these are both a two ply and I tried to make them a sport weight yarn. 
I think they turned out pretty well. They might be a little bit thicker than a sport weight yarn, but it's handmade. It's okay. I'm gonna call it good. I think they're beautiful and it'll all even out in the end, right? <laughs> um, I'm not being too serious with myself for this project. I think it's just a fun play in creativity and I think my friend will really love it. There's a lot of love going into this project. And yes, like I said, I prepped the fiber for these skeins in the same way that I've been doing for all of them. So I just pull the fiber, I just split it in half in the full length. So not splitting the entire length, but going like undoing the entire braid and then going to like the halfway point and then breaking that off and then I just spin one whole continuous on one bobbin and then the other whole piece on another bobbin and then ply those together to finish the yarn. Um, and as I've been reading my new book, Yarn A Texture um, by Jillian Moreno, I've been learning more about how you kind of prepare your fiber for spinning beforehand, how that can affect the way the colors come out and it's been really interesting and how if you split the yarn more in certain ways then you can have longer or shorter color transitions and you can really just you can really play with it to decide exactly the kind of yarn that you want to make so yeah I'm gonna be planning um, or in the future <laughs> after I finish all of the spinning for this project I am planning to kind of experiment more with how I prepare my fiber before spinning and see how that changes things. Um, see how that changes the colors and the way that they knit up in the end. So yeah, excited that these are finished. So now I have five colorways completely finished and the sixth is almost completely finished and then I will be ready to start knitting, yay! <laughs> so this is the sixth colorway. I still have them um, just as singles on their bobbins. So this is what they look like. This is again a Neighborhood Fiber Co. base and I think it's actually the exact same base as the one I just showed you. Um, it is their BFL and Silk base. I think it's their Cobblestone Roving is what it's called. And I'll just show you up close. So I forget what the colorway names are um, of these. But again, this one is just an even lighter, like kind of peachy orange color. Um, so this is one of the singles and yes, they are ready to be plied. So we're really, we're really almost close. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is, this is my little, I don't know if this is technically a lazy cape, but this is what I use to ply and then also wind off my yarn when it's actually finished. Um, this is how I this is how I ply them. So I just pull from here and then on to the spinning wheel I go. So I'm really really excited to have these all finished and it's been a really fun process so far. So yes I'm really excited to actually start knitting on that project and now I will talk to you a little bit about the llama fiber that I've been processing. So about a month and a half ago I had the privilege to meet a local llama farmer and she was so kind. She had just, just done her shearing of her llamas and she told me that they normally just throw away all of the llama fi fiber. Um, they don't sell it to anyone or they don't use any or all of it themselves. So most of it just goes straight in the trash. Um, so, <laughs> uh, you know, she was totally willing and happy to give me the fiber since I was so excited to, you know, do something with it, process it, spin it, do whatever I could just to see if I could create something with it. So I finally have started on that process. I cleaned some of the fiber. I tried to clean about a pound of it. She did give me a really big bag of it, so I haven't gotten through most of it, but I just wanted to start somewhere and start processing some of it. Um, and it was really, really dirty. I also had the privilege to meet some of the llamas that lived there and they were just so sweet. But I did see when we were driving up um, that they would literally roll around in the dirt and they were very dirty and you could see in the fiber that it was also very, very dirty and full of grass and vegetable matter and 
just dust and everything like that. So it really needed a good bath. Um, even though they don't have lanolin, um, not a lot of grease going on, but just literally like dirty in the fiber. So I used my um, unicorn, is it is it unicorn wash power scour? Used that on it. Did Had to do quite a few rinses. It was black water. It was really bad. <laughs> but then once that was finished, then I set it out to dry on a screen outside. Um, just to drip dry and I tried to be as delicate with it as possible. I figure you can also felt llama so I just tried to be as delicate with it as I could be. And then at that point I was like what do I do? I don't have combs, I don't have a carter, how do I process this for spinning? So I finally invested in a comb set which I have here now. I will share with you what I got. So this is the set that I ordered, and it has already been put to use. It's already a little bit dirty, or not dirty, but full of vegetable matter and little little bits of fiber. <laughs> but um, these are the card or combs that I got. So I ordered these from Etsy from Bam Fiber Works, and I've been having a really good time with them. Um, I think this is the extra fine or fine. I think this is the fine version. Um, they have either two rows of teeth or three rows of teeth, I believe. And I think now actually using this a little bit, I think three rows would have been better because the fibers are very short and I've been having a little bit of trouble. Anyway, um, <laughs> they have multiple versions of these, but I've been starting to work with them and they come with these great little toppers here so that you don't hurt yourself. So that's what the combs look like when the sheath is taken off, but they have this little magnetic sheath, which is really great for storage. And, and if I'm not like actively working with it, then if I just have it out, it makes, it makes things a lot safer. So this bottom portion, you kind of attach to a table and then it has these little clamps to attach to it. Um, and yeah, it's really well made. I don't have any bad things to say about it. Only good things. Oops things are falling. I'm going to put this down anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have, I have only great things to say about it so far and it's definitely doing the job. Um, I will be sharing, um, in my next video, I'll be sharing some more of my whole process with this. So you can check that out later. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see all of that goodness. Um, but yes. And then I also picked up a Diz from them for getting the fiber off of the combs. So I've been learning a lot and having a lot of fun. So yes, that was the second step, combing the fiber. Had some difficulties, <laughs> um, but have been learning a lot. And there was a ton, like I said, there was a ton of vegetable matter in this fiber, like thousands of teeny tiny little pieces of grass and bigger pieces of grass. And like, it was a lot. So <laughs> the carding process has been taking a while, but it's really meditative and fun, I find, and I can just do it while I'm watching a movie or something, and I don't know. It's not a problem at all. I've been having a lot of fun with it. And then, so I, I started carding a little bit, um, or carding? What am I saying? Combing. <laughs> I started combing a little bit of the fiber, and then I was too excited. I had to start spinning it. So I started spinning, and this is what I have so far. Here we go. And... It probably doesn't look like much to you right now, but I'm just so excited to even have this little bit. Um, there is some vegetable matter still in it, but let me tell you, compared to what it was, we got a lot of vegetable matter out. <laughs> um, and there's still some little pieces that I'll pick out, but anyway, this is a single coming along so far. And spinning it was also a new challenge for me. So I don't know if the llama, I think the llama um, fiber when it was on them was probably like three inches, maybe two inches. I don't quite remember. But after the shearing, I don't know if because they didn't intend for it to be sold or used in any way, if they didn't care about keeping the, the staple length intact. Because let me tell you, 
this fiber is like an inch or maybe two inches long. So like I said, it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle to process, um, but I'm determined. I'm determined to at least have enough to spin and knit a hat out of this just because I want like a little memento of this whole thing. I think it's, it's really, it's really beautiful to be able to turn something that was going to go in the trash into an actual wearable garment that is beautiful. So that's the goal with this project, um, at least to do that. But yeah, after all of this, it's actually turning into something really nice. I don't know if my spin, my spin's not going to be perfect on this, but so far I think it's perfectly pleasant. And um, yeah, I'm, ju I'm just kind of working with it as best I can, trying to deal with the shorter staple length as best as I can. Um, and yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's actually really soft. I thought that llama was supposed to be like inferior to alpaca and alpaca is so, so soft. And I've always heard that llama is like, you know, you only want to use it for rugs or something like that. But after carding this, I'm sorry, I keep saying carding. After combing this fiber and it turning really fluffy and open, it's beautiful. It's so soft. Like I feel this right now and it's just so soft. So I'm rambling on. I'm sorry. I'm having so much fun <laughs> with this, with this whole process. Um, I wish we had feel a vision. I'm telling you, this is soft. <laughs> so that's been a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, like I share, like I said before, I will share more of my process with you in a future video for that. Okay, so the next thing, I think we will get into what the giveaway is. If you clicked on this video, you may have seen there's a giveaway. So Knitting for Olive, if you haven't heard already, has come out with a new book and they were so kind to send me a copy of the book and also offer a copy to you guys as a giveaway to one lucky one of you um, as a giveaway. So this is the new book and wow this is it's a substantial book. Look at this. This is like at least a pound. This is a really substantial book and they have a lot of patterns in here. 20 patterns that I think have all been self-published before, or not self-published, but individually published. I think they have all been individually published before but now they have them all bound together and also translated into English, which is amazing. And as I was flipping through here, I was like, yes, I would knit that, I would knit that. <laughs> um, some of the things that um, have been actually on my to knit list for quite a while. So one of them is, let me find, okay, so this one, the Darling Wrap. Let me try to get it here. So hopefully you can see. So this one I have actually, been wanting to knit for a very long time. I just think it's so beautiful and so delicate and it looks like something a ballerina would wear. I just think that would be so cozy to be able to to wear. And let me find, there was another one that was just so beautiful. Okay, and also this one, the Chrysler top, this really beautiful v-neck tank top, I think is just so gorgeous. So I will definitely be using this book and knitting a few things from here. Um, just really gorgeous. So like I said, we are having a giveaway for one copy for a lucky viewer and it is only for the US and Canada, I'm sorry. Um, so if you would like to apply to be in the giveaway, then please just like this video, subscribe to the channel and uh, leave a comment down below mentioning the book and then you will be entered in the giveaway and I will be uh, announcing the giveaway winner in the next podcast episode. So yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited about this book. So many new things to knit. Okay, and then another new wonderful thing that has come into my life. Oh my goodness. So you may have heard wool and twine Jewel of Wool and Twine has been putting together beautiful little sock yarn sets um, for this fall season. She had one in September and now she has had, she has just released the October box set. Um, it's just so cute. I'm so excited. And I had the wonderful privilege of collaborating with her on that project. 
So um, this whole box set was inspired by mushrooms and gathering mushrooms. And if you may know, um, I make hand felted stitch markers and one of them being a mushroom and it just went so perfectly with the whole idea of the whole box set. So we collaborated on that. So um, if you have purchased one of the box sets, you will be seeing that stitch marker soon. So I will just share with you and I also purchased one as well because I really I also really wanted to knit this pair of socks and I haven't had the privilege yet of using some of Woolen Trine's yarn. So I just thought it would be so perfect. So the box set included um, the pattern for these adorable little mushroom socks, which I will put a picture here so you can see. Um, and I think the, the pattern will be or is already available by itself as well. Um, I'm pretty sure. But the box set came with this yarn. It is just so beautiful. So this is all hand dyed, naturally hand dyed by Jewel. And it's just so beautiful. And this is um, her custom Obis sock base. So I was going to start knitting on it already. I was going to cast it on. I received it yesterday and I was going to cast it on. But I just wanted to show you how cute the little set was right here. So yes, beautiful colorways and it feels really lovely. Now I'm very excited to cast on. Of course, I need another project to work on. And then the set also included this really lovely, adorable little handmade wooden little keepsake box. So you could put any of your little notions in here or whatever it is. So that was part of the set too. Just really, really cute. And then of course, the hand felted mushrooms, which which I contributed, which, where did I put it? Here we go. <laughs> so I'm currently using mine on my socks, on my Kudo socks. So this was the little mushroom stitch marker that's also part of the set. Um, yeah, just so cute. I loved the little idea of this set and I can't wait to cast them on. They're so adorable, so fitting for the fall time. So I think that's everything. I think we got through it all. <laughs> So thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this episode then please do make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this in the future and also if you would like some more updates on projects we talk about today and also the llama fiber and then the future of the wool fiber. I'm just so excited. So um, thanks for being with me here today and I hope you have a lovely rest of your week and we'll talk to you next time. Alright, bye bye. <laughs>